Um, so thank you very much for the invitation and the opportunity to speak today. And uh, good morning to everyone uh, who joined today. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm Alini. I'm a postdoc at Leiden University. And um, as an algebraic geometry, geometer, I really like to think about classical objects. And um, I also very much enjoy um, classifying things. So I hope that my talk today will sort of reflect that. Um, so what I would like to do today is to tell you something about a particular um, classification problem, which is the problem of classifying pencils of plane curves up to projective equivalence. And specifically, I would like to describe what the picture is in the degree three case, so pencils of plane qubits. So everything is over the complex numbers. And here is the rough map um, for my talk. Um, first of all, when I say um, pencils of plane cubics revisited, um, what I have in mind is to revisit um, Miranda's work on GIT stability for, well, pencils of cubics. And the sort of goal I have for today's talk is to um, explain how when how one can reprove his main result in a slightly different way. So I will first uh, summarize his uh, his work, and then I will take a step back and 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 talk um, more generally about DIT for pencils of curves of any degree, and because I I, I would like to explain this. Um, a stability criterion that uh, I proved together with uh, Masafumi Hattori, um, which is a complete stability criterion. And then what I would like to do is to explain how we can use this criterion together with the work of Shah um, to recover um, the criterion uh, of Miranda. So then I'll finish um, with that. Okay. So as I said, this is a rough map of what I plan to do. And um, let me tell you um, or describe um, what Miranda did and his very first paper in 1980. So he was looking at GIT stability for pencils of plane cubics. And the sort of main idea he um, explored or fact that he explored is this correspondence we have between pencils of plane cubics that have a smooth member on the one hand and on the other hand, the so-called rational elliptic surfaces um, with section. So in his paper, he proved this um, criterion where he relates the stability, the GIT stability of a pencil of cubics with the types of singular fibers that appear on this, the corresponding rational elliptic surface. So to be uh, precise, so here's the, the statement of his um, main theorem. So he showed, first of all, that a pencil with plane cubics, say P, is GIT stable if and only if this pencil, it contains a smooth member and Moreover, every fiber appearing in the corresponding rational elliptic surface um, that I'm going to denote by XP is reduced. So no uh, multiple components. And moreover, um, he further showed that if we restrict our attention to just pencils uh, with smooth members, then P is going to be semi-stable if and only if the corresponding rational elliptic surface XP does not contain a fiber of type two star, three star, or five star, or four star, um, where we are using Kodaira's notation here. So um, we allow fibers of uh, type IN star. Okay, so this is um, his main result. So I would like to, um, and as I said, so he's, it's a criterion that relates to GIT stability with types of 
singular fibers uh, on rational elliptic surface. So what I would like to do next is to remind you um, of how this um, beautiful and, and classical correspondence uh, works. So starting with a pencil um, of cubics, say P, um, how does one obtain this surface XP? So say uh, uh, I have my pencil, so I pick uh, two generators, so two cubics, uh, and I'm looking at the one-dimensional linear system generated by them. So the surface is obtained by blowing up the plane at the nine base points of the pencil. So I'm going to blow up P2 at the nine points where the two um, cubics, the two generators, intersect. So if I do that, I'm going to retain a surface which is rational, right? So it's by rational to P2. And moreover, the surface is going to come with a map to uh, P1, whose fibers are smooth curves of genus 1. And this map is a vibration. Um, and so the generic fiber is a smooth curve of genus 1. And moreover, it comes with a section, uh, which you can take, for instance, as the last exceptional um, divisor in the blow up. So generically, um, in the surface, we're going to have 12 singular fibers, which are nodal. Uh, once, like uh, I try to uh, illustrate here in my picture. Um, but if one starts with a more uh, degenerate pencil, say, for instance, if uh, my pencil has a triple line um, as one of its members, then I, I, I get uh, other types of singular fibers. But um, the, the possibilities for um, the singular fibers they are well understood. So they have um, the types of singular fibers have been classified by Kudaira. And this is um, another thing that I would like to remind you uh, next. So um, among the, the, the possibilities, uh, so these are the possibilities. And among them, we have uh, the reduced ones that I drew here on the top. So a smooth um, fiber we call um, of type I0. Then uh, another possibility is this cycle of n rational curves. Uh, well, in n equals 1, we just have a, an older curve, like in the previous picture. And then we have these other three types, so a cuspidal one, type 2, two rational curves, which are tangents, so this is type 3, and then three rational curves intersecting at a point, so this is type 4. So uh, if we we now go back to Miranda's result. So the stable pencils uh, are the pencils which, first of all, contain a smooth member. So then uh, when we blow up to nine base points, we do get the rational elliptic surface. And the types of fiber that are going to appear in that surface, if my, my pencil is stable, uh, so all fibers are reduced, so the ones uh, in the top here. Now, we also have the non-reduced um, singular fibers. And uh, what I'm drawing here is the dual graph for the fibers, you, which you might uh, recognize. So these are extended thinking diagrams. So we have this type IN star, four star, two star, three star. Um, so the numbers are the multiplicities of the components. So these are all um, minus two curves. Um, and again, if we go back to uh, Miranda's criterion for GHA stability, um, the unstable uh, pencils are those, well, with a smooth member, are those um, for which when we look the, at the corresponding rational elliptic surface, we have um, a singular fiber of type two star, three star, or four star. Okay. So um, this is, um, um, let's say, the basics about this correspondence between uh, pencils of cubics and rational elliptic surfaces and a bit of context for um, Miranda's result. And uh, as I said in the beginning, here is the, the motivating question that I have for, for my talk today. Um, 
what I would like to do is to try to um, reprove Miranda's result uh, using a, a slightly different approach. And then what I'm gonna try to do for the, um, the rest of the talk is to, well, explain how um, one can do that. Okay. So what I'm interested in is in, in looking more generally at the problem of classifying pencils of plane curves um, of any fixed degree D up to projective equivalence. And I want to um, rephrase this problem into a problem of constructing some, some quotient. So I want to use the machinery um, of geometric invariant theory. And um, here is um, how this works. So the setup is as follows. So for us, um, V is going to be the space of sections of O1 and V2. Uh, my group G is going to be SLV. And then curly P sub D is going to denote the space of all pencils of plane curves of degree D. And what I'm going to do is to identify this space of pencils of curves with the Grossmannian of lines in the space of all curves of degree D, right? Um, but moreover, I'm going to think of this Grossmannian as being embedded in some um, large projective space via the Plucker embedding. And I'm going to consider the action of G, so the action of SLV uh, on this space inside projective space um, where the action just is the induced action from uh, the action of G on V. Okay, so let me be a bit uh, more precise of, or more concrete on how this um, embedding works. So what are the um, Plucker coordinates and how do elements um, of G act on this um, coordinates, and specifically how um, diagonal elements of SLV act on these coordinates. Okay, so to, um, to define uh, the, the Plucker coordinates, I, first of all, I need to fix the basis um, for V, and then um, with respect to, to those to that basis, I'm gonna um, pick so two generators of my pencil and then write it uh, as the zero of some, some polynomial, like I'm writing here. So if my generator um, uh, is CF, so that, that means it's given by the zero of some polynomial F. And then I'm uh, the coefficients of that uh, polynomial I'm calling F sub ij. And similarly, if my other um, generator is CG, what I mean by that in, in that choice of um, basis, then C, CG is represented by the zero of uh, G. And again, the, the coefficients of that polynomial I'm denoting by G sub IJ. So with that uh, um, notation, then the Plucker coordinates for the pencil, um, sorry, are given by just this um, two by two minors that I recorded here. And I'm going to denote um, for each possible i, j, k, and l, I'm going to denote the, the Plucker coordinate by m sub i, j, k, l. Okay. So how does a um, diagonal element of g act on, the, on a Plucker coordinate? Um, it acts as follows. Um, well, so here I'm actually um, talking about um, one parameter subgroups because what I'm interested in, in doing next is to tell you um, uh, the, what is the description of uh, the GIT stability. And uh, we have the Hilbert Mumford criterion for that, which um, um, is related to, to one, one parameter subgroups in, in um, some sense. So I will tell you how, how this um, 
how one parameter subgroup act on the on the plotter coordinates. Okay, so um, first of all, I'm always going to assume um, these are normalized, so I'll fix some basis so that uh, the action is diagonal. Uh, and then the exponents uh, of t, I'm going to always try to denote by a sub x, a sub y, a sub z. And then the action um, is just given by multiplication by t to some exponent, and uh, I have written here what the exponent is. Okay, so with this in mind, one can then uh, define the following quantity. So I fix uh, a pencil, I, I choose a, a, a one parameter subgroup, and I fix some uh, the coordinates so that that's normalized, and then I define this quantity that I'm going to denote by omega of p comma lambda. And what I would like to do next is to state um, the hubert monfort criterion in terms of uh, this quantity. So when uh, when uh, running DIT for uh, a classification problem, we have this very uh, concrete numerical criterion. Um, and in our setup, this, this criterion reads as follows. So it's just some, some inequality involving this, this quantity that I just defined. So a pencil P uh, of uh, plane curves of degree D is going to be unstable, respectively non-stable, if and only if this uh, I can find some one parameter subgroup and coordinates such that uh, this inequality holds. So we have a strict inequality uh, for instability, and uh, we have a greater or equal if the pencil is uh, non-stable. OK, so this is. Uh, um, well known, um, but now what I would like to do is to explore um, a key idea, which is the following. So um, the action of T on the um, on the Grassmannian on the on the space of of pencils of cubics, it comes from the action of of SOV on V. Uh, in particular, the, my group is not only acting on the space of pencils, but it's also acting on the space of curves. So um, just like I defined this quantity omega for my pencil P, I can define um, the analog quantity for the curves that lie on my pencil. And here's how uh, we define it. So now I'm considering the action of G on the space of curves. And what I want to do is to um, see if I can describe the stability for the pencil in terms of the stability of the curves lying on it. So in some sense, I want to compare the quantity omega um, P comma lambda with uh, this number omega f lambda for a curve lying in P. Okay, so let me be a bit more precise about this. What we can prove is the following. So this is something that I um, I did in my PhD thesis. Um, one can show the following. So if I have a, a pencil of, of uh, plane curves of any degree d, and I pick any two curves in my pencil, and I pick a one parameter subgroup of g, then I have the sort of lower bound for omega of p lambda. Moreover, I can also obtain a sort of upper bound and then um, because of the, the first proposition, I actually get an equality. Okay, so uh, again, let me be a bit more precise. So we can also show that if I start with a pencil P and I pick any curve in my pencil and 
a one parameter subgroup, then I can find another curve in my pencil P such that uh, the omega for P is going to be equal to the omega for F plus omega for G. So if we use this two um, prepositions or these two um, comparison results, uh, then one can actually relate the stability of a pencil to the stability of its generators. But we can actually um, push a little further. Um, and another idea that we can explore, OK, so yes, we can look at the action of G on the space of curves, right? So that's uh, uh, the diff uh, exterior uh, asymmetric power of uh, V star. But we can actually look at the action of, of G on the space of curves of degree 2D. And if we do that, then we can actually obtain a complete stability criterion for pencils of plane curves of any degree. And this is what um, we proved together with Masafumi Hattori. So what we proved is the following. So a pencil of plane curves P is GIT stable, respectively semi-stable, if and only if for any choice of generators, so for um, any two distinct curves in P, um, then the curve CF plus CG of degree 2D is GIT stable, respectively, uh, semi-stable. So in other words, um, we show that, so the problem of determining whether um, a pencil of plane curves is GIT stable or not is equivalent to the problem of determining when um, a curve of degree 2D, that is the union um, of two curves of degree D, is GIT stable or not. So this is um, our um, result. And in fact, we were able to generalize this um, to higher dimensional uh, linear systems and the sort of um, analog statement that uh, you can expect holds. So if I have a, um, a k-dimensional um, linear system of, well, say, say curves, um, then that is going to be GIT stable if and only if I can find um, k plus one linearly independent curves in my linear system such that their union, um, which is going to be um, something of the of degree uh, k plus one times d. So if that union is GIT stable um, as well. OK, but what I want to um, focus today is, uh, as I have been, um, as, I, as I advertised in the beginning, is, OK, so I have this um, explicit criterion, um, but I also have uh, Miranda's criterion. And I should be able to, to show the two things are equivalent. So by taking t equals 3, I should be able to recover um, Miranda's result. So what I would like to do next is to uh, explain how uh, one can do that. But uh, before I, I, I move on, uh, maybe this is a good uh, a place to, to stop and, and ask if there are uh, any questions.
As for now, there are no questions in the chat, but Amit says it's okay. <laughs> okay. You know, there are no <laughs> questions for now. Thank you. Okay. Okay. No problem. Okay. So um, I want to use this um, criteria that I just showed you. Um, in the case where d equals three, to recover uh, Miranda's description of GHT stability for pencils of plane qubits. Now, um, so what does our criterion says? It says that a pencil of cubics is GIT stable, respectively, semi-stable if and only if I can find two cubics in my pencil such that their union, so a cestic, is GIT stable, respectively semi-stable. So um, I'm now uh, looking at um, GIT stability of plain cestics. And fortunately, we have uh, we can use uh, Shah's work for that. Um, so he has a, an explicit description of GIT stability of cestics, also from um, 1980. And it says the following. So the cestic um, CF plus CG, where CF and CG are two cubics, um, so that um, is going to be stable if and only if it satisfies one of the following conditions. It does not contain a multiple line as a component. It does not have a consecutive triple point. It does not have a point with multiplicity greater or equal than four. Okay, so, um, so this is the, the criterion for cestics in general, but our cestics is the union of two qubits. So um, what these conditions um, impose is the following. So if you think about on uh, what the curve CF and what the curve CG can be and how they can intersect so that um, conditions one, two, and three uh, hold, so it translates into the following. Um, we can show that my pencil, so the pencil generated by CF and CG, necessarily contains a smooth member. Moreover, any curve line in the pencil has to be reduced, right? So this is coming from um, condition one. And at a base point of my pencil, um, any curve is either a smooth or it has at worst as a node as a singularity. Okay. So why is this equivalent to um, Miranda's criterion? Pauline, I think we have well, a question from Hamid. Yes, yeah, sure. Hello, sorry. Just checking consecutive triple points means infinitely near triple points, right? Exactly. Yes. 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 Thank you for, Thank you. for asking. Yeah. Yeah. It's a weird name. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I actually copied from Shah's work and I think maybe the, the terminology at the time was that, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, infinitely near triple point. I know. I saw the theorem yesterday. It's weird. Ah, okay. <laughs> Um, so what I was about to just say, uh, yes, so why um, does this agree with uh, Miranda's description? Okay, so uh, first of all, we have this uh, one prime, so P contains this move member, so this was part of his uh, um, statement. But then we have this two prime and three prime. And the point is that if we combine these two conditions, then um, we can show the corresponding elliptic surface 
uh, obtained from, from the pencil P, it can only have reduced fibers. So it's a good start at a, a two a, and two prime. Well, any curve in P is reduced, um, but it's uh, we need a, a little bit more. So um, we can't have uh, bad singularities, let's say. And then uh, condition three prime takes care of that. So if at every base point of my pencil, any curve is either smooth or it has a torsed to node, then um, when I blow up that point on, the, on my surface, I will not produce a curve uh, with multiplicity. So this is uh, just a, a plain, um, a little bit, uh, okay, so this is my two generators. I know these are the conditions on the singularities. If I blow up the, the points, what kind of uh, curve do I get? Okay. Now, what about the second part of uh, uh, Miranda's statement? Okay, so the second part, it says something about semi-stability or equivalently uh, unstability, because it uh, is an if and only if statement. So I, again, um, like in, in his criterion, I restrict myself to the case where uh, my pencil contains a smooth member. And then I ask the question, when is this pencil uh, unstable? And so using our uh, criteria, the pencil is going to be unstable if and only if I can find two curves in my pencil such that their union, CF plus CG, as a static, is unstable. And again, I use uh, uh, Shah's work on GIT stability of statics um, to figure out what the conditions are. And because the cestic is the union of two cubics, um, the conclusion in the end is the following. So up to relabeling, um, it has to be the case that if the cestic CF unions CG is unstable, then uh, one of the following cases um, happen. So the first case, um, I'm on the top, uh, top left, let's say. Um, one of the curves has to be a triple line, and then the other curve can be arbitrary. So this is uh, unstable, the union of these two curves. The other possibility now in, in the middle, uh, one of the curves is the union of a double line and another line. And then the other curve has to intersect it in a certain way. So the curve in green uh, that I'm uh, calling CG, it is going to be tangent um, at the double line at the point where the two lines in CF meet. So this is another possibility. And so the union of these two curves uh, as a static is unstable. And then the third possibility is, so again, one of the curves is the union of a double line and another line. And my curve CG is going to uh, have the double line as an inflection line. And again, um, this, this curve, the union of these uh, two curves, the purple and, and the green one, so this is unstable as a cestic. Okay. So this is the description uh, for what are the generators of uh, an unstable pencil of cubics 
with a smooth member. And then what one has to do to recover uh, Miranda's description is to analyze the kinds of singular fibers that can come out of this um, uh, of this, this picture. So in the first case, for instance, we one of the generators is this triple line. So if I, I and I know that I obtain my surface by blowing up the base points of my pens. So the strict transform of this, this triple line is a still uh, a curve of multiplicity three. So there will be a fiber in my vibration that has a component of multiplicity three. So if we go back to Kodaira's classification, um, that fiber is of type uh, um, four star, three star, or two star. And in fact, the type is going to be determined uh, on how this other generator, the curve CG, intersects the triple line. If the triple line is an inflection line, for instance, we get a fiber of type two star. If it's just a, a, a tangent line, but not an inflection line, we get a fiber of type three star. And then in the general case, we get the fiber of type uh, four star. And similarly in the in the other cases, uh, but in fact the other cases um, will give us fibers of type um, only fibers of type three star and four star. Uh, and okay, so this is one direction, right? So starting with the, these objects, what kind of um, fibers do we get in the rational elliptic surface? But we actually have to um, do a little bit more, um, we have to, so the converse, starting with a, with a rational elliptic surface that contains a fiber of type two star, three star, or four star, why is it true that um, the corresponding uh, pencil um, has as generators um, curves CFCG in one of these cases? Um, Yeah, and this is something that uh, one can argue by looking at uh, uh, the dual graph um, of the fiber. For instance, in the case of fiber of uh, type two star, one can show that it has to come from, uh, in the pencil, we need to have a triple line and that triple line has to be the inflection line of the, um, uh, other generator. Okay, so um, to uh, to recap, um, what we did was to show that we can recover. Um, Miranda's description of GIT stability of pencils with cubics um, using this criterion that um, we proved together with um, uh, Masafumi Hattori, where it suffices to look at the description um, of GIT stability of cestics in some sense. Uh, well, of cestics that can be written as the union of two cubics. Um, and in general, uh, so, but the, the point is that this, this, this criterion is more general. It works for um, any degree D. And as I briefly mentioned, um, we also have a generalization for um, higher dimensional linear systems. Um, and I think uh, I actually will stop here. It was a, sorry, it was a way faster than uh, I was expecting, but I'm very, very happy to um, answer any questions and try to um, expand on, um, on anything that uh, I mentioned. So thank you very much uh, for listening and uh, for the invitation again.